job to make sure you were comfortable. You like my big face? <laughs> it's kind of excessive, don't you think? They still haven't airbrushed me very well. At least they didn't emphasize my hips. That was good. Trudy, honey, how did you acquire this? Oh, my mother. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice ring. So have you had the prongs checked to make sure it won't fall out? Did your mother wear this a lot? Can you speak into the mic, please? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Okay, okay. So I've got 14 karat yellow gold and I've got one about 1.25 total karat weight diamond. With a couple of diamonds around it, sometimes called pave. Pave is just a fancy French word for tiny. Pave, tiny. So you know your boyfriend wants to get you a, a pave engagement ring, you need a new boyfriend. <laughs> quite nice. It has platinum that, of course, it looks like silver, but it's actually platinum, which the small diamonds are set into. And then, of course, the larger central diamond is set into the 14 karat yellow gold. Value on your piece, which is marked 14K, 18K, whatever it might be, yours is marked 14K. If you go on my website, I list for you all of those precious metal marks. So you know what 585 means. So you know what the international mark for 14 karat gold means. So if you see these numbers, you can actually translate them into how good a piece is. Go on my website and learn that. Very simple. Value on the piece in my hand, about $2,000 to $2,250. Very good. So where can I help? I'll leave it right here. And she got this 14... Wait, 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 wait. She has 14 karat gold setting carnelian ring. She told me it was her mother's wedding ring. Oh, that's possible, I guess. All different types of rings, of course, are used at weddings. Um, in the in the 17th and 18th century, you would have your ring on the finger that I'm holding up. Your pointer finger would be the ring finger. Now we use, of course, this finger because there was a thought that that finger's vein goes to the heart. But in fact, in the 17th century, it would be your, your actual pointer finger as your wedding finger. Um, the carnelian and the seed pearls on either side. The ring dates any time between the early years of the 20th century. Probably no later than 1930, and value on the ring is about $1,100. It's nice. Carnelian and some seed pearls. So, Bob, that's why I picked this particular ring. How did you acquire it? I need you to speak into the top of the mic. It belonged to my wife's great Beautiful. Well, the wife just corrected you. It was a great, great aunt. Do you wear it? Did your wife wear it? No. Why? Why are you not wearing this? You women, I don't get it. I'm such a jewelry girl. It's too small. They said you could have it sized. You're working on it? 14 karat yellow gold, platinum inset setting. You've got easily 2.5 to 3 total karat weight of diamonds. Fire, I mean the fire. Look at this thing sparkle. Beautiful. The piece dates to about the 1930s, 1940s. Value on the piece in my hand is $10,000 all day, every day. God, that's good looking. I'm going to wear that a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. I love sapphires. You just love them. Yep. You think they're great. They do. do you have a sapphire here? I hope so. You don't. You have a blue garnet. Yeah, more relatively rare, but a sapphire technically will have um, the sapphire color goes, the blue color goes all the way through the sapphire. In a garnet, which comes in many different colors, in green, in red, we think of garnets as red, in green, in red, in blue, in, uh, in many different colors, in orange, there's even a pink. That's basically what you have. When you look through this, through the hole, now the reason why we have with the jewelry, we have that hole in the bottom is so light can come in. So basically, when you look through the bottom of the hole that based of the setting that basically shows you the um, the stone itself, 
You don't have that blue color all the way through, which tells me that your particular stone is synthetically developed, not naturally developed. That means we're not finding this sapphire in nature, we're finding this sapphire in a lab where they produce stones. Okay, so it's a synthetic stone, it's worth about $50. Now, the setting indicates that it's 10% iridescent platinum. Okay, that means there's only a little bit of platinum which is making this look this color. It's not sterling silver, it's not platinum, right, because there's not enough of it, but it's just this base metal. So value on this ring altogether is probably about 100 bucks. What'd you pay? Okay, so you didn't do too badly. You paid about $25 more than you should have. Okay. Here you go. Wear it in good health. Enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh. Well, did your mom like Home Shopping Network? Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. All right. She wore this a little bit more frequently, right? Yeah. How did I know that? I didn't even meet the woman. Here's how you know. Antiques don't lie to people, though. The object will reveal to you how it's been cared for. She washed her hands a lot, right? She was doing work a lot, maybe in the kitchen a lot, okay? And that's what you can see with respect to the gemstones. She has actually what are relatively what I would call second tier. You know, first tier is fantastic emeralds. You got second tier um, green stones. In this particular case, you have, of course, those green stones. Not emeralds, they look like a tanzanite, a topaz kind of piece. And then you've got diamonds again, relatively nice diamonds. You've probably got about 2.5 um, total carat weight of diamonds set in 14 carat white gold, made in China and marked as such. Anytime something comes into the United States by export, it must be marked for the country of origin in China, uh, in China, in English. And this one says China, that particular law is enacted in 1891. It's called the McKinley Tower Act. It helps you to date pieces, too. So if you see another country's name in English on your object, you know this piece is from after 1891. Your piece dates to about the 1960s, 1980s, somewhere in that time frame. Value on a piece in my hand, just about $1,500. So you've got some money in the diamonds, money in the precious metals. But this is white gold. White gold is white in color or silver in color because it has a high silver content. Rose gold has a high copper content. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you, you are late. But at least you noticed that. I give you credit for that. He didn't go on fun, you know. Have a seat, honey. 